what procedure was carried out here now in this question we have been given two radiographs one is a pre op radiograph and one is a post op radiograph and on the basis of these we have to identify the procedure that was carried out now what do we see in these images is that this tooth right this is a young permanent tooth so this is most likely to be the first permanent molar or the sixth right now what we can uh, appreciate is that there is a carious involvement with the six which is very close to the pulp canals right this is the pulp so it's very close to the pulp canals also we can see that it's a immature uh, tooth because the root development is still ongoing the root apical uh, closure has not yet been achieved okay now in the post op radiograph what we see is that there is a filling material which is uh, extending till the coronal portion of the tooth the radicular pulp chambers are all uh, intact okay the root development has actually continued or the root length has increased from the pre op to the post op right so the root development has continued although the uh, root end closure is still not achieved so the procedure that was most likely to have been carried out in this situation is a pulpotomy okay because a pulpotomy is a pulp therapy which is usually done when the infection or when the carious lesion is restricted to the coronal pulp so the radicular pulp is vital it is healthy and it is actually retained to allow the development of the root to take place especially in a young permanent tooth or a young immature tooth where the root apical closure has not yet been achieved so we want the root end closure to take place so we maintain this radicular pulp that is present right because this is healthy pulp so we only remove the coronal pulp which is infected okay and we fill this up and we maintain this so that the root end closure can continue right this is the technique of pulpotomy had it been pulpectomy dpc or opexification we would have seen a different clinical picture for example when there is an indirect pulp therapy okay or indirect pulp capping this is usually done in those situations where there is uh, where the carious lesion is running deep and if you try to remove the entire carious lesion you may cause exposure of the pulp so what is done is some amount of the deep lesion okay is maintained within the uh, within the tooth so the rationale behind this is that there are two layers which are seen in the carious dentine there is an outer layer which is irreversibly damaged and also infected okay and this layer should be removed but there's also an inner layer which is reversibly denatured meaning that it can undergo remineralization and it is not infected so this can be preserved okay and we can seal this with some suitable medicament so that this will encourage the formation of reactionary or secondary dentine which is going to uh, help prevent pulp exposure so after this restorative material is placed or this medicament is placed okay then when you uh, when you revisit the uh, lesion in order to remove this inner layer okay the pulp exposure will not take place because the secondary dentine would have been formed so that is the therapy of indirect pulp capping in direct pulp capping what happens is sometimes there can be a pin prick exposure that can occur so uh, a, this is usually seen when there is deep dentinal caries right so what you can do is instead of removing the pulp we can place a medicament over the pulp which has been exposed okay which is going to cause the formation of a new uh, dentine uh, over that area which has been exposed and allow healing to take place okay this is by the formation of something known as a dentine bridge okay so for example if during a uh, removal of this carious lesion there was a pin prick exposure or a small amount of exposure of the pulp uh, which in which case the bleeding could be easily stopped okay so this tells us that uh, there is no uh, inflammation of the pulp right so in the in those situations we can do direct pulp capping where we can just place a medicament over this and we can seal this so it is going to cause the formation of a dentine bridge okay so we can maintain the vitality of the pulp now in pulpotomy we remove the coronal portion of the pulp which has been infected 
okay so here when you in uh, when you open up the pulp cavity you will see there is hemorrhage that is taking place okay so you know that this pulp tissue has been infected and it is inflamed but the radicular portion of the tooth might still be intact or the pulp may be vital and it may be non infected non inflamed so in those situations we don't simply want to remove the radicular pulp we only remove the infected coronal pulp right and we will maintain the radicular pulp so that the root formation will continue that is pulpotomy whereas in pulpectomy this is similar to the root canals which are seen in permanent teeth where the entire pulp tissue till the root apex is removed okay now apart from knowing what the different pulp therapies are it is also important to know in which situation are they indicated okay so in those situations where there is a reversible pulpitis okay where the pulpitis is reversible okay and the pulp is vital and there is an open apex there is open apex okay in those situations we will consider pulp capping or pulpotomy that is either direct or indirect depending upon the situation and depending upon the depth of the lesion okay if the depth of the lesion is minimal we can think of indirect pulp capping or if there is uh, sm some amount of exposure of the pulp we can do direct pulp capping or if the coronal portion is involved we can do pulpotomy okay this is all done in cases of open apex where there is vital pulp so that we can allow the root closure to take place right but if the apex is already closed okay then we can proceed with normal root canal therapy or pulpectomy right whereas in irreversible pulpitis where there is a necrotic pulp again if the apex is closed we will only go ahead with the root canal therapy or pulpectomy it is only when the apex is open that we need to consider other alternative methods of treatment because we want to achieve root end closure right so either in those case we will go for something known as apexification which causes the formation of a uh, root up, uh, barrier at the uh, at the end of the roots right apexification or pulp regeneration therapies so these are the this is the different indications for the different types of pulp therapies now what is important from our uh, topic here that is the topic of pulpotomy is the various types of pulpotomy okay this is a very important question it is usually asked very frequently in the examination okay the various types of uh, pulpotomies and the materials which are used for these pulpotomies for example formocrisole okay zinc oxide eugenol so they can give you even questions where they can ask you that if beechwood crisol is used as the material for the pulpotomy what is the type of pulpotomy that was carried out okay so that will answer would be mortal pulpotomy something like that so this is a very important table of the classification of pulpotomy so other than this you need to know what the indications are what the contraindications are and what the procedures are for each of the different pulp therapies